Hey guys, Jay here. This is smarthelping.com. I've got a quick little template here I want to talk about. Um, came through as a client. Uh, a client asked for this. It's pretty simple, but it does have its value. Um, basically, we're talking about rental constant, and I did a quick analysis here, a 10-year with a purchase and exit, some lease revenue. This is triple net lease, no expenses by the purchaser. And um, got discounted cash flow analysis, a return summary, and I'm going to talk about this uh, IR sensitivity I put together as well. So I don't get to do a lot of these. Usually I'm not doing, uh, the, the models I'm working on are far more complex and in-depth and I can't just do a quick little video. But this thing only took me about you know 30, 40 minutes to put together. Uh, so I'm going to share it with you guys. It will be available for free as well if you want to play with this uh, in a Google Sheet. Uh, link in the description. So let's start with the top row here. What is this? The rental constant. And what the rental constant is, is the percentage of the purchase price you're receiving in rent per year. And no, in this, in, in like all my models, you will edit the cells in yellow. All the other ones are formulas. So we can adjust the rental constant. We can say it starts at 5% or 3% or whatever, um, say 6%. And then we can adjust here the lever. So we can say, oh, we're going to go up at, you know, 0.5% per year. This, you know, 50 basis points. Um, 100 basis points be 1%, um, 10 basis points, 0.1%. And that gives you lease revenue over time. We also have a valuation, which is simply based on an annual compounding rate. So let's say we are all in cost is right here. And this purchase price, I mean, you could have construction costs, renovations, whatever. It's just your total all in cost on the property. And then you could define how that's going to go up over time. If you think it's going to grow at 3% or 1% or 4% or what have you, that automatically happens. And then you have an exit at that value in year 10. And then we have our cash flow. Now, what we can do with the cash flow streams are all kinds of stuff. You can discount each cash flow in each period by the discount rate to get a net present value. Note the discount rate is going to be what you have to discount the future. Um, well, so the IRR and the discount rate play a very complementary role. The IRR is what you have to discount the future cash flows at so that the net present value is zero. So we can always check to make sure our calculation is right by taking the internal rate of return of this deal. In this case, it's 9.5%. Assuming you're investing a million dollars and you're getting this cash flow back over time with this exit. We copy that IRR into our discount rate and it should give us an NPV of zero, which it does. So good. We know our calculation is correct there. Um, and then I also put together, we got an equity multiple, which is just your total cash flows divided by the investment amount. So 2x our money, 2.1x over 10 years. And then we've got an IRR sensitivity. Now, interesting thing here, um, and you can adjust the purchase prices up and down with these levers, um, but with the current construction of the model and the way the logic is set up, notice how the IRR does not change as you go down the table. What that means is regardless of purchase price, the IRR is the same because the only thing affecting cash flow is the rent, which is just simply a percentage of the purchase price. So let's say we put this down to 500,000. You can watch the lease revenue change. So that goes down in the same exact proportion. So the IRR, in this case, it was 9.5. At a million, it was still 9.5. Equity multiple, still the same 2.13x because the only thing we're changing is in direct proportions of purchase price. Uh, we've got the valuation at a standard compounded rate, the rent constant. So you don't have any variation with a difference in purchase price because you adjust your cash flows. Now, what you might want to do is let's say we want to buy it at a million dollars. 
sorry, add a zero. And we want to put the cash flows the same and say, okay, let's just lock those in place. Now look at all of a sudden, as you change the purchase price, which we could say, you know, 20% more or 30% more or 20, you can put these at whatever you want to do the variation. So that's, you know, purchasing at 30% more or 30% less than the purchase price here. And usually with these tables also, just to know, I do five. So you can do a middle one as your base case. So you can see the middle here is 9.47, which matches this if I extend the decimal. So this is your base case right there. And everything around it is higher or lower. But look at we got IRR is going up. Why is that? Well, we're not we're we're not changing what we expect to get in rent, but we're adjusting the purchase price. So no matter what we do with this purchase price up or down, the rent's going to stay the same. Meaning the attractiveness of the deal or the IRR now will adjust. Uh, equity multiple should adjust as well. Let's say uh, this was 500,000. Yeah, you can see the equity multiple and the IR both change here. And this is when you lock these into place. But if you adjust the rental income in proportion to the purchase price, well, then change the purchase price doesn't really change the output of the deal. It would change the total cash returned. Um, but again, it's just in the same proportion. Uh, now let me undo this. So the formulas are intact. Okay. So yeah, this way, the only thing that's going to adjust your IRR in this case is changing the rental constant. So as the con rental constant goes higher, your IRR will go up. For example, if this were um, 5%, now my IRR, IRR is only 86 and the reason why this adjusts is because this is saying, well, uh, what if the relative rent you're collecting is lower or higher relative to the purchase price? And that will definitely affect, you know, because the purchase price is the same, but you collect more or less over time. That's going to change the IRR. What will not change the IRR is if you change the purchase price while still making the lease revenue contingent on the purchase price. So there's no adjustment up and down in this table. There is adjustments left to right as the rental constant changes. And you can think of the rental constant as simply how much rent are you collecting relative to the purchase price? Are you collecting more relative to the purchase price or less? Um, now, if we adjust our basis point indicator here, this will adjust all values up if we put this higher. Um, but uh, the sensitivity table itself is simply saying if all these variables are the same and we just adjust these two here, how does the IRR change? Now, the data table is kind of tricky. Um, to do it, you have to reference what calculation you want to appear here, right over here. So here I'm just hitting, you know, equals IRR. I'm highlighting the table with my area. These inputs being sensitized on the top row and this uh, column. We're going to data, data table, and simply on the row input, rows are here. So it's the rows would be our rental constant, this. Our columns are going to be that going across, and that would be our purchase price here. And there you go. And now this is all automated. So a simple real estate model, um, but I think... There's some value here if you're just getting into Excel modeling. This is a pretty good place to start. Uh, <clears throat> so enjoy. Uh, now, if you want to get into the more complex stuff, I have a lot of different models. If we go to the uh, real estate models section of smarthelping.com, which is where I post all of my financial model templates, for hundreds of different industries I've done over the past decade. Um, you can see real estate models. I've done a lot of specific ones here for different things. Um, you know, multifamily. You can see here it's got a four property version and a single property version as well. Um, a single property version I actually did more recently, but you know, with debt, refi stuff, expenses, 
rent rolls, all kinds of uh, complexities that I, um, you know, include exit cap rate, um, all sorts of things. So you can check out my real estate models there. A lot of uh, the general real estate model is probably the most robust. I've used that for a lot of consulting jobs. Uh, strip mall acquisition is a great one. Um, condo, new home development, build to sell or build to rent is popular. Short term rentals have not been as popular lately. Assisted living has been steady. You always have good demand there. Um, hotels, mobile home park, all kinds of specific uh, real estate models. Also, if you want to get even more complex and do syndication deals with GPLP structures, I've got a bunch of different waterfall templates here where you can plug in the terms and the cash flows and check those out, see how how uh, how that modeling logic works. It's pretty complex. This, this is uh, some of the more complex things. Um, and other things for real estate, cost segregation, depreciation recapture analysis, uh, rent versus buy, seller financing. Oh, I did put a land banking model in here, which is kind of interesting. It's only included in the bundle itself, not um, in individual purchases. But yeah, that's what I do for a living. I build models in Excel. Custom jobs, you can hire me. Uh, new clients onboarding 275 an hour. This is for, I have current agreements. I can't really change this for everybody. So if you're currently working with me, then this is your rate for the time being. Uh, you can also buy templates at discount if you buy in bulk. Uh, you don't have to buy the bundles themselves. If you buy 3 to 9, you get 30% off. 10 to 19, 40% off. 20 or more, you get half off. And if you want to check out the financial models I've got, check out the financial models tab at the top here. I've done a lot of recurring revenue and SaaS business models across a bunch of different industries. Real estate, we just went over. A bunch of industry-specific models. Uh, We've got renewable energy, daycare services, educational courses, hydroponics, farming, manufacturing, laundromat, coffee shop, construction, gym, fitness, vending machines, all sorts of things in here that have been uh, built over the years that have helped a lot of different clients do their financial projections, internal analysis, build things to give investors general valuation tools. Most recently, the exit readiness scorecard I built, I thought that was pretty awesome. Where we, I'm giving grades to different parts uh, of your organization based on key uh, subgroups and how we're weighting those. Uh, a lot of in-depth analysis here if you're looking to buy companies or if you're looking to sell and see you know, how likely you are to get a maximum valuation for your business. Uh, but yeah. I will see you on the next one. Let me know if you want some work. Uh, I'm available to hire and check out the templates. Uh, tons and tons of things you can learn uh, in finance, not just Excel formulas and things, but a lot of different concepts you can learn here on the site uh, with the Excel spreadsheets. So check it out and have a good day.